right, let's take a look at our lesson for today. We are going to be graphing sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, before we jump into graphing, we really need to look at vocabulary words. There's some specific vocabulary words to graphing and trig functions that we really need to be familiar with. So let's kind of focus on this box right over here. So first, a um, cycle, a cycle is the portion of the graph where from one point to the next where the graph repeats itself. I have one graph of sine. So here's our parent sine function right here graphed. Let's, let's look at the way that it's graphed. There is a perfect correlation between the graph and our unit circle that we've memorized. Think about the value, uh, if you look, these x values are our angle measures and the y values are the unit circle values, you know, our numeric values. So here, notice that when so, you know, our angle measure is zero, sine of zero is zero. See, we're plotted at zero. We know sine of pi over two is one. Notice that we are plotted right there. We know that sine of pi is zero. Here it is again. And we know that sine of three pi over two is negative one. And then we're back to zero. So these match up perfectly with the unit circle. Uh, they're they're uh, a product of the unit circle. So, um, so so a period would be the number of degrees or radians required to complete one cycle. Our parent sine and cosine require 2 pi or 360 degrees to complete one cycle. It is important to note, so here, here's we have a period 2 pi, 2 pi. Tangent and cotangent have a different period. They're the only ones that have different periods and their period is pi. Okay, so just something that you're really going to have to remember. Amplitude. Let's talk about the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance from the middles, so this middle line right here, to the maximum. So this distance would be 1 for the parent sign, or the distance between max and minimum is 1. Or excuse me, our sinusoidal axis and minimum is 1. So let's talk about this graph a little bit more in detail before I keep going through... Um, as we look at this graph, we read it from left to right, just like we read a book. As we are reading along, notice that we are going, when we go up, that's called increasing. When we're headed down, that's called decreasing. And you may have already had these words before. They're really significant for us in calculus. So increasing and decreasing. Notice that here is a maximum point that is the highest Y value in this immediate region. So we have a maximum here and a minimum here. That's the lowest point in this immediate region. And so our max and min points are where we change from increasing into decreasing. Notice that I am increasing, and when I change to decreasing, that creates a maximum. I'm decreasing. When I change to increasing, that creates a minimum. So that's max and min's points. Inflection points. Inflection points occur when concavity changes. Now let's talk about concavity. That may be a new concept for you, maybe not. Um, concave. Concave down means like down, cupped. If you think about a cup, it would be turned upside down. The cup would be turned upside down. Concave down is down, where the cup is facing down. Concave up is where, you know, the reverse, where the cup is facing up. So if you look here, we have this piece right here is concave down. See how it's cupped down? And this piece right here is concave up. Notice the where they change. They change right here in the middle. And that is called an inflection point. The concavity changes at the inflection point, so it changes in the middle. The sinusoidal axis is the line through the middles. And so for this particular one, the sinusoidal axis is the x-axis. So it'll be a horizontal line, a y equal line. Okay? So that is the main vocabulary that we'll be dealing with. Our amplitude again was this distance right here with the parent is 1. Alright, so let's look at the parent graphs. It's going to be really important for us to memorize the shape of all these parent graphs, how they start, how they end because it's going to help us tremendously in this course and the next course. Let's look at our cosine. All right, we're starting here at zero and ending again up here. So cosine looks kind of like a U. See where it is? This is, the, this is one cycle of cosine right here. 
one cycle and that that's just the parent cosine we have to memorize that it's just promise me I promise you it's helpful because we know that cosine of 0 is 1 right we know that cosine of pi over 2 is 0 we know that cosine of pi is negative 1 and so forth these match perfectly to the unit circle values that we have memorized um, sine uh, we already have one cycle over here we start here at 0 and that is one cycle tangent tangent doesn't have a sinusoidal axis sine and cosine do sine and cosine's period is 2 pi tangent's period is pi it does not have a sinusoidal axis it's kind of um, crazy looking isn't it I mean it's got all these little asymptotes and all kind of crazy stuff going on let's think about what causes what causes the asymptotes we've seen that tangent can be undefined remember we know tangent sine over cosine when cosine is 0 it's undefined right and so if you look everywhere cosine is 0 at pi over 2 3 pi over 2 we have an asymptote so tangent has um, a lot of asymptotes the parent tangent is graphed like this right in the middle see its middle is at 0 he's got asymptotes on either side notice how the other graphs start at the x-axis the parent portion you know what we like to think of as the shape starts at the x-axis tangent is different its shape starts at negative pi over 2 well it's different in a lot of respects that's just one of the ways it's different so memorizing those is going to be pretty significant for you um, let's look at transformations transformations we've been working with transformations for years and the transformations that you have learned you know the shifting the left right shift up down shift stretching all that stuff is the same and so we look at here we have a sine or a cosine they ba basically have the same transformations so a sine its amplitude is this number right here a whatever that number is is the amplitude and so that causes a it affects the y value and it causes a stretch a y stretch that's the amplitude all right the period we find the period by using this letter b so this little formula 2 pi over b or 360 over b depending on what we're in if we're in radians or degrees now this these formulas here work for sine and cosine if we were to determine the period for tangent it has a different original period doesn't it its original period is pi or 180 so these formulas would change to pi over b or 180 over b if we were trying to calculate the period of tangent all right c this letter c right here that position right there is a phase shift that's a left right shift that tells us if we're going you know if we're shifting left or right and it affects the x value d the last one is a vertical shift that one tells us whether we're shifting the entire graph up or down so those types of transformations should be familiar to you hopefully uh, that isn't too crazy all right so again let's I'm going to reiterate so a cycle is how long it takes to do one period okay one period is from this would be one period of sine from 0 to 2 pi this is one period of cosine you know this is one period of tangent just that little part in the middle so we typically will be graphing one period all right this last box refers to the first way that I'm going to teach you to graph I'm going to show you two techniques and I welcome you to just do either one whichever one you like whichever one feels more comfortable so the first technique that I'm going to be showing you is basically transforming points taking the parent points and transforming them and the X transformations are these two in the middle right B and C are the X transformations and x transformation is just like it always has been it's real troubling isn't it if it's if it says minus then you're adding right it's always x transformations are always opposite of how they seem the y transformations these on the outside a and d are exactly you know what they are a multiply so you would do the multiplier division first and then you do the addition and subtraction so i will demonstrate how that works on the next example any questions in general before we look at the examples okay so let's move to the examples 
So the first example, I'm going to do uh, the first way where I transform parent points. For some students, they prefer this way. They don't have to think about transformations, what's happening to the graph, what's going right, left, up, down. They just plot points. It's just pl plotting points. So a lot of students prefer this technique. Um, and then I have a lot of students who prefer the second one. So you just need to decide what you want to do. So what we do is start with the, the parent points of sine. And we know, we know the unit circle, right? Like the back of our hand. So we know at zero, sine is zero. At 90 degrees or pi over two, sine is one. 180 at 0, 270 or 3 pi over 2, it's negative 1 and 0. So I think we're familiar with those points. Really easy for us to write those down. So now let's work on our transformations. I'm going to do the Y transformations first because the Y ones are much easier than the X transformations. So the Y transformation has to do with the 2 and the 5. Those two are the Y transformations. All right, and what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take these y values and I'm going to have to apply the transformations to the y values. When I have to multiply the y value by 2 first and then I have to add 5. Okay, so we take this y value of 0, multiply it by 2, which we get 0, and add 5 and we get 5. I take my y value of 1, multiply it by 2, I get 2, add 5, I get 7. Take my y value of 0, multiply by 2, add 5, and get 5. We see the pattern here. I'm just taking all the y values, multiplying them by this, and adding this. So negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. And then 0, we've done a bunch of times. We know it's 5. So those are the points, my y values, for my new graph. Those are my y values. All right, now let's work on the x values. The x values uh, are these two right here. These are what determine the x value. Now, just like you know x is just a little, little bit fussy, it looks like I'm supposed to be multiplying the x values by a half, but really we always have to do the opposite, right? We have to divide by a half. When I divide by a half, that's like multiplying by two. Right, you with me? So I have to take zero, multiply by two, you know, get 0, and then am I going to add or subtract 30? I'm going to add, so this is going to be 30 degrees. Okay. Then I take my 90 degrees, I multiply that by 2, and get 180 degrees, then I add 30 to that, right, are we okay? And then we get 210. Okay, we see the pattern? Then I take 180, multiply that by 2, I get 360, I add 30 to 360 and I get 390. Okay, are we okay with the pattern? I'm just going to go ahead and write the other ones down. So the next one is 570. Yeah, 570 and then 750. Now with this graphing technique, all I have to do now is go over to my graph and plot those points. I mean, that's really all I have to do. So really significant for us. I know I have some students in here that like to conserve energy. Well, you have to plot all five points and you have to label your axes or you will lose points. I'm just going to say straight up, it has to look like I'm showing you right here or you're going to lose points. You have to have all five. So I'm going to start here at 30 degrees. One, two, three, four, five, 30 degrees, 210, 390, 570 and 750. And then my y values range from 3 to 7. So I'm just going to do like that. 3, 5, 7. Okay, now I'm just going to plot the points. So 30 degrees, I'm at 5. 210 degrees, I'm at 7. 390 degrees, I'm at 5. 570 degrees, I'm at 3 and 750 degrees, I'm at 5. Okay, and that's our graph. It looks like a sine graph, right? A little bit twisted and shifted and stuff, but it's a sine graph. All right, now let's answer our questions. The sinusoidal axis, that's this axis through the middles. So that is y equals 5. My amplitude, 
That's the distance between the middle and the high or the middle and the low. That distance is 2. I could also get it from my equation. That's my amplitude is 2. The period. The period is the difference between 30 and 750. So I can read that difference is what, 720? Okay, so it's 720. If I can also calculate it, I can calculate it by using that formula. If you recall, the formula would be 360 over B. B is a half. So I basically multiply by 360 and I get the 720. So that's the period. Let's see what else they want. They want the first positive maximum point. So let's see what this is going to look like. Okay, so the first positive maximum point looks like it's right there at 210. So it's our first maximum positive, in other words, right of the y, uh, x axis, excuse me, the y axis, right over here. So our first positive maximum is at 210.7. And our first positive inflection point, the inflection point is where we change concavity. Notice right here, I would be going from concave up to concave down. So our first inflection point is actually at 30 degrees. 30 degrees and 5. Let's see. Oh, and our phase shift. Our phase shift is a positive 30 degrees. You can put plus 30 degrees or you can just make it a positive 30 for a shift. And that's the first way to graph. It's by changing points. Pretty straightforward. I will tell you that using this technique seems to be, I'm just talking about the years of watching students plot graphs seems to be the less error prone way. Uh, students make fewer errors when they're simply plotting points. Okay, but that, that some people don't like doing that and that is perfectly fine. It's a choice. Okay, so that's the first way. So now let's talk about the second way. The second way, well first, are there any questions on this first way? We're just basically taking the parent points and transforming them according to our X and Y transformations. The second technique is actually um, I have it listed over here on the side, the steps. Some of us like steps. So I'm going to basically, I'm going to do those steps. So we're going to do the second technique on number two. So the first thing we do, if you'll look, we, we basically plot the phase shift first. Okay, the phase shift is going to tell us where our graph starts, unless we're tangent. But phase shift tells us where it starts. Our phase shift here, we look at this, our phase shift is left pi over 2. Right, so I'm going to go left pi over 2 and I'm going to mark my phase shift. That's the phase shift. The second thing that I do is I'm going to calculate the period and I'm going to plot the end of my cycle here. I plot the beginning and ending. So my period, I use my formula. So this is in radians, so it would be 2 pi over b b is 4, so the period would reduce to pi over 2, right? So that means that is the length of the graph. The graph is going to start at negative pi over 2 and it's going to go pi over 2 radians. So I plot that on my graph. It just so happens that that would put me here at 0, right? That would be the end of my cycle because negative pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 0. So I have the beginning and ending plotted. Once I have the beginning and ending plotted, I go and I divide that area in half. So halfway between 0 and negative pi over 2 would be negative pi over 4, right? Negative pi over 4. So I plot that in the middle, negative pi over 4. Then I'm going to cut those into halves again. Uh, here, the halfway between 0 and negative pi over 4, I think we can see would be negative pi over 8, right? So that would be this x value. And then halfway between here, I actually can count now. 1 pi over 8, 2 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8. See how? So this is going to be negative 3 pi over 8. And I have my x's uh, plotted. Once I have the x's plotted, then I'm going to go to step number 5 and I'm going to get my y values. How do I get my y values? I get them from here. I know I'm supposed to go up 4. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, this is going to be my middles. So I'm going to go ahead and put that line in here, it'll just be helpful. It's my sinusoidal axis. 
And then this amplitude of 3 tells me I'm going to be above the, the sinusoidal axis 3 and below 3, right? Above and below. So I'm basically going to be at 1 and at 5 <coughs> and it's 5, 6, 7, and what are we are? 1, 2, oh that's a 4, sorry. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 7. So 1, 4, and 7 are the places that are going to be important to me. So I write those down. So I have my Y value set. Now I'm just going to plot the shape. I have the shape memorized. It's a cosine shape. I'm going to plot it. The catch to this would be is this is a negative cosine. So if you recall, the positive cosine shape looks like a U like that. Right? That's what it looks like. And if this were positive cosine, I would go over here, I would start up, you know, and then go down and it would look like that. Right? But this is a negative cosine. A negative cosine has it flip over the sinusoidal axis. It flips upside down. So instead of looking like this, instead of starting at the max, it's actually going to start at the min. It's actually going to look like that. So I go over here to my first location and I plot the minimum, which is a 1. And then I'm just doing my shape. Then I know I have to go up. And then I go up to the maximum of 7. And then down and then here. So it looks like this. And that's the second way to graph. Your choice on what you choose. It, whatever you like, whatever you think you'd be more, more comfortable with. I encourage you to pick one and like stick with it and just master whichever one you pick instead of trying to flip back and forth and back and forth. Okay, so now let's answer our questions. Amplitude, amplitude is this distance right here, which we also get right here, which is a 3. Sinusoidal axis is the middle, so it's a y equal equation. It's that y equals 4. First positive critical point. Critical point, now I'm changing words on you here so that we be, we're comfortable. Critical points and maximums and minimums for our purposes mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. oh, I said we want the positive one. We want the first positive one. So really, well, let's kind of finish this out. We really would like, uh, it's a max, max or min, we would really like to award zero that, you know, first positive, but it's not positive. It doesn't have a sign. It's actually very sad about not having a sign. It's the only number without a sign. I think it's jealous of all the other numbers, but it doesn't have a sign. So we can't, that's not positive. We can't say that's the first. We're going to have to default to wherever this maximum is. So notice the maximum over here is two spaces in. So the maximum over here would be two spaces in, which would put me, what, at pi over 4? We got that. So my first positive would be at pi over 4. And it happens to be a maximum, so it's going to be at 7. Now we go with the first positive inflection point. That's the first time that in the positive realm where we change from concave up to concave down or vice versa. See, we have a concave up here and a concave down. So it looks like this first space in would give us our inflection point. So that looks like that would be pi over 8. Are we all comfortable with that? So pi over 8. And that y value is a 4. And that there completes the second technique for graphing. Okay, choose the one you like. Questions about that? Now this tangent one, I'm actually going to do the second way because the first way would be to transform points, which I, I personally think is easier. I'm just transforming the parent points. Um, this second way causes a little bit of a strange twist on tangent, so I'm going to do, I'm going to plot tangent, the second technique that I showed you, just so you can see. So what we do, right, we find our phase shift. Our phase shift is going to be left or negative 60 degrees. I go left negative 60 degrees. Now the issue with tangent is we're moving its little belly. Okay, he probably doesn't like me calling it its belly, but oh well. Here's my asymptotes. That's the parent tangent, right? It's the only graph that doesn't start at the origin. The parent does not start at the origin. Its little middle part, its middle little tummy is at the origin. We're basically just moved its little tummy right here. So when I do that, um, let's see the next step is to calculate the period. So I've got to go over here, calculate the period. We know it's tangent, so it's got it's weird. It's got a different period. 
we're in degrees, so its normal period is 180. We divide it by B, which is one-third. So it's basically going to be 180 times 3, which is 540. So the period is 540 degrees. With tangent, what we have to do is we have to split the period in half and put half of its period on the left and half its period on the right, right? Because that's how the parent is, right? So I take the 540, I divide it by 2. What is that? 270. So I need to go 270 degrees this way which 270 and 60 is, what is that, 330? So 330, and then I have to go 270 degrees this way. And we're, be, we're careful because we're at negative, you know, we have a positive, so 270 degrees this way would put us, what, at 210? Mm -hmm. All right, so I have my outsides. My outsides are where the asymptotes are, so I can go ahead and draw them. I still have to find the other two points, you know, we need five. I need the middle of this and the middle of that. So if the middle, uh, we split to 270, then we have to split to 135, right? Half of 270 is 135, so I would need to go 135 from either direction you felt comfortable going from, and that was, would be negative 195. And same over here, um, the middle would be 75. Okay, are we okay so far? So I would have completed through and I have all the X's plotted. Now I have to move on to the Y values. My Y values tells me to shift down two. So I'm down two. And I don't have like, um, for tangent, I just basically have here, this isn't really, this negative two is not really a sinusoidal axis, it doesn't have one, but that would be like the middle of it, if you will, that's the middle part. And my amplitude would tell me how far up and down to go from the middle part. So I would go a half a space up and a half a space down from the middle part. The middle part is at negative two. And so let's go ahead and put the middle part right here because that's his little middle, right? We, we, sh we shifted his little, little middle and then um, I'm going to go uh, on the regular positive tangent. We're going to go down half a space. We'll put here at the negative 195 degrees and up half a space and put here at the 75 and then we can draw our tangent. And that's how to draw tangent from that second technique. Okay. The first technique would be easier, um, but I wanted to show you the second one because it's different. The last one I need to talk about is number four. I want you to look at that for a moment. There is a problem with that equation. The only reason I'm doing number four is to demonstrate and highlight a problem. I would like for you to look at the equation for number four, compare it with the other three equations, and see if you can determine what is wrong. Something dreadfully wrong. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. It has nothing inside. Basically, the B has been distributed. That is not okay. In fact, many a student has graphed that completely and graphed it completely wrong because they didn't recognize that it's the two can't be there. It's not allowed. So before I can do anything with it, I have to divide the two out of that middle part before I can do anything. So y equals 3 fourths cosine. Here's my two. I have to factor it out. So I know we factor it out. We're left with an x. Factoring out a two is like multiplying by a half, right? I mean, it's like dividing by two. So that would give me two pi over six or pi over three left. Again, if you're concerned that you factored out incorrectly, just distribute it and make sure you come up with the same thing you started with. Okay, just distribute it out. You can see that, yes, we factored that correctly. So now I can read from this equation. Now I can. Once I factor the two out, please do not let that catch you. There are several of these kinds of problems on the daily work, on your homework, on quizzes and tests. Just be very careful that you take care of this little issue. So the phase shift, now we can read from the equation. The phase shift is this part, right? It looks like plus pi over three, but we know it's x, so it's, it's the opposite. So the phase shift is going to be minus pi over three. Okay, and that is our graphing lesson. How are we?